Hi, I'm Monica. In the previous lessons, we already had a working car insurance policy management application. The problem was that the user interface was a bit rough, ugly, and clunky. That's why, in this third lesson, we're going to ask Windsurf, our beloved AI-powered IDE, to help us refine the user interface of our OpenZava application. Let's see what happens. We'll start by taking a look at how our application looks as it is right now. In the case of the customer, honestly, it looks pretty good. I think we won't change anything here for now. For the policy, if we scroll down, we find that the data at the bottom is reasonable. What feels a bit too much is the customer visualization, because it displays absolutely all of their information, including a list of policies. That's too much for this case. In the vehicle section, we find something similar. The view is too complex. As we scroll down, we see too much data from the policy, including a list of vehicles and another one of claims, which aren't really related to the vehicle. The problem is with the reference to the policy, which shows the entire policy in full detail. The same thing happens again with the claim. We see a list of policies, another of vehicles, and yet another one of claims, but none of that directly relates to the claim, even if it looks like it does. This is all policy data. Once again, if the policy visualization within the claim were simpler, the interface would be much cleaner and clearer. The conclusion is clear. Just by simplifying how references to the policy and the customer are displayed, our user interface would already feel completely different. Let's ask Windsurf to do it. We're going to ask the AI to simplify the views using plain language without using technical OpenZava terms. We're doing it in English, but you can do it in your language if you prefer. We explain the problem that the user interface is too complex. We say it's because the references to policy and customer display too much data. Then, politely, we ask it to fix this issue by making the views of the references simpler. Displaying only the minimum data. The video is recorded in real time, with no editing or tricks. You might have to wait a bit, but you can see how this really works. And finally, our thinking machine begins generating code for us, not without the courtesy of explaining everything it's doing. We see how it analyzes our Java entities one by one. Now it tells us that the solution is to use a reference view to refer to a simpler view than complete. Then, the real work begins. It's editing our code. It has modified policy and tells us it will add a simple view in customer. Now it modifies claim to use the simple view in the reference to policy. We wait a bit for it to finish. And here we have a summary of all the work it has done. We accept the code. And with excitement and no delay, we go straight to the browser to see how it turned out. Now, in the customer section within the policy, it only shows the first and last name. If we scroll down, everything looks clean and clear. The policy module has turned out quite well. Let's take a look at the claims module. Here, the reference to the policy is simple and the rest of the form is also clear and straightforward. Perhaps showing only the policy number is a bit too simple, although by clicking the edit button we can view the full policy data in a dialog. Let's see the vehicle. In this case, the reference to the policy is simpler than before because the customer in the policy only shows first and last name. However, all the policy data is still being displayed, so this module didn't turn out as well as the others. 
Our application is much better than it was, but maybe in the claim module it should display more policy data and in the vehicle module less. Let's ask our AI to fix that. We thank the AI for its work, and then express our concerns. First, in claim, it only displays the policy number when showing the policy, which is too little. We ask it to also show the customer, otherwise the customer is not visible anywhere. Second, in vehicle, it should not display all the policy data, this is something it hadn't fixed yet. Windsurf is processing our request. As usual, the first thing it does is analyze the code. Then it decides it needs to create a new view in policy that includes the customer. And without hesitation or delay, it starts editing the policy class. Now it edits claim to use that new view in the reference to policy. And finally, it edits vehicle for the same purpose. It gives us a summary of everything it has done. And we accept its code. Let's see how the application looks now. In the vehicle module, we see how the policy is displayed with the policy number and the customer's basic data. The same happens in the claims module. The policy is displayed with the number and the customer. The form looks better. The policy and customer modules were already well done before, so we've ended up with a fairly clear user interface for all modules. The interesting thing about all this is that we've not only achieved it without writing code, but we haven't had to use technical open Java terms. We asked for the what, not the how, and it worked quite well. Moreover, we've gotten this far without even reviewing the generated code. Something we'll do next. To review the modified code we'll use the version control system. We click on claim. It marks in red what was removed and in green what was added. We notice there's a new view, simple. And that in the policy reference it uses the with customer view instead of complete. Now let's look at customer. It also added a view called simple, with just the first and last names. Nothing else here. Let's see what it did in policy. It added two views, a simple one with just the policy number and a with customer one, which also includes the customer. And in the customer reference it uses the simple view instead of complete. Finally, let's review vehicle, where we see it also created a simple view. And that in the policy reference it uses the with customer view instead of complete. Reviewing the code is important, because if we don't know OpenZava we have the opportunity to learn, and if we already know OpenZava we maintain control over the changes being made to our code. By the way, the code written by the AI was correct, the same that an experienced OpenZava programmer would have written. It's important that we make a commit before asking Windsurf to make changes to our code, because first, we'll be able to review the changes, as we're doing now. And second, if the AI has a bad day and messes up our code, we can restore it and avoid unnecessary tears. It's true that Windsurf has its own mechanism to evaluate changes and reject them. But sometimes it fails and also, often we want to try several changes without reviewing the code, and when it works well, review it, as we've done in this example. In just 10 minutes and with a little artificial intelligence, our OpenZava application looks much better. But there are still some user interface details that can be improved, which is why I invite you to watch the next video, part 2, where we'll continue refining our OpenZava application's user interface with Windsurf and where you'll have the opportunity to learn new things. See you in part 2.